This is Jonas from VHDLWiz.com. In this video, we are going to learn about signals in VHDL. And we are also going to find out what the main difference between a signal and a variable is. Let's have a look at the code from the previous tutorial. Up until now, we have been using variables for everything. And that is okay for what we have been doing. But the scope of a variable is only within the process where it was declared. So if we wanted to communicate with anything outside of this process, then we would have to do something else. Let's just copy all of this code and save it as a new file, which we will call to 6 underscore signaltbvhd Don't forget to change the entity and architecture names. And let's just delete all of this code from inside of the process so that we are left with a blank process. And this variable, variable uh, which is called i, I'll change this one to my variable. A signal can only be declared a certain place within the VHDL file, and that is between the architecture is tag and the begin tag. This is what's called the declarative region of the VHDL file. Now let's declare our signal. And we do that by typing signal, my signal, colon, integer, colon equals zero semicolon. We have now declared a signal of type integer with the name my signal and we gave it an initial value of zero. Unlike a variable, this signal is going to be accessible to every process within this architecture. Now let's create some code that does the same thing to the variable and the signal and see what happens. I'll add a couple of lines that will increment both my variable and my signal by one each time this process iterates. And I'll throw in a report statement so we can observe their value in the simulator. Of course, there has to be a wait statement somewhere in the process. Let's add a wait for 10 nanosecond line, which will cause this process to iterate every 10 nanoseconds. Let's fire up Molosim and try to compile what we got here now. But there is a compilation error. Molosim complains that I'm trying to assign to my signal using a variable assignment. This isn't legal in VHDL. When assigning to a signal, I have to use a different notation than the colon equals. I have to use uh, less than equals, kind of this arrow notation. This is just how it is in VHDL, and this is called a signal assignment. So let's try again, this time no errors, so let's go into simulation mode. When I press the run button, our report statements will start appearing in the transcript window. And we can see that my variable starting at 1 is incrementing by 1 for each iteration. But my signal is behaving differently, it's starting at 0 and incrementing by 1 in each iteration. And this is strange because it seems like we are doing the exact same thing to the signal and the variable. Let us try an experiment and copy this block of code and just duplicate it in front of the wait statement and see what happens. Also, let's throw in a report statement right at the start of the process so we can observe when the process restarts. When I restart the simulation and press run, we can see that the program first prints out process begin, indicating that it's at the start of the process. And my variable is incrementing by one each time we print it. But my signal is uh, zero, two printouts in a row, and then it's one for two printouts in a row, and then two for two printouts in a row. So it's going half the rate of my variable now. What is going on? Okay, I'll give you a clue if you haven't figured it out by now. It has something to do with this wait statement. You see, variables are updated immediately, as one would expect. But signals, on the other hand, they are only updated when the process pauses. And this process only pauses on the wait for 10 nanosecond line. Let's investigate this a bit further by copying this report line and pasting it directly after the wait for 10 nanosecond line, without altering the signal or variable at all. After I have restarted the simulation, we'll have a look at only the printouts from the first iteration. My variable's value is printed out as 1 and 2, just like before, and the new printout reveals that it hasn't been changed after the wait statement. However, the printouts reveal that my signal has been changed from 0 to 1 after the wait statement. Another important observation here is that even though we incremented our signal twice before the wait statement, it seemed like the first increment was forgotten. This is an important property of signals. If you assign to a signal several times before the process is paused, then it's the last assignment that will win. When the process pauses, the signal will get only this last value it was scheduled to have, and all the previous assignments will be forgotten. That's all I had for you in this video. Thank you for watching and check out vhglwist.com for more tutorials and blog posts.